Yeah, as much as I can be, for sure. Yeah, there he is, right down there. He didn't want you in the car, huh? Yeah, he wanted to go solo, so hopefully uh, he doesn't have to winch. That's pretty good confidence. Yes. We didn't come all the way down here to winch and qualify. Yeah, he really doesn't have much experience in the rock, but we're going to see how he does. No, he's got this, no problem. On the back side. live in Hammertown and what a perfect uh, time to show up at your pit Austin I was coming by to congratulate you on a really nice qualifying run here your junk's all torn apart what's going on Oh, uh, well, the springs are flopping around a little bit. Um, so that's not going to work out too well. No, it isn't. So what are you going to do? What's your plan? Um, are you in charge of this? I guess so. Yeah? Yeah. Are you making? Are you going to make the decision? Uh, he is. So you're fixing the shock slider, um, and you killed it out there in your qualifying run, and you did something that your father has never done before. And you know what that is? Qualified in the top 15. <laughs> yeah, that's one of them. The other one is you were extremely patient. You cruised in there, you picked your line, you didn't just hold it to the floor, you backed up twice, got the right spot, and went right up it. Oh, yeah, I guess I did do that. And you didn't break the car. Uh, can't say I didn't break it. So you're gonna you're gonna fix the shock right here. The car's otherwise good. And what's going on here? Uh, we found out that one of the wires was broken in the control module for the winch. So these are both easy fixes, and you also uh, saved this kind of work to do on the lake bed because otherwise you get bored, you start thinking about the race, right? Yeah, we showed up early this year, and I was confused on what to do. <laughs> There's, we didn't have any work to do. Yeah, yeah, we are pretty prepared this year. It's, it's kind of weird. <laughs> So did, did you did you have to winch or did you get hung up in spooters or outer limits? I mean, there's some big boulders in there. You slide over, you belly out on one of those, you're kind of done, especially on 37s. Did you have to get pulled out of anything? No, uh, we didn't have to get pulled out. We had to stack a few rocks because there's some guys parked in the middle of the trail and we got hung up on the rear diff. Yeah, so basically, which you're going to have that during the race anyway, but there's nothing wrong with stacking a few rocks. Yeah, stacking a few rocks is part of it. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited to see you uh, in the rocks. Is your dad still going to drive this car in the desert, or are you doing the whole thing? My dad's not driving this car. I knew that. <laughs> so who's riding with you? There was a, there was a little bit of talk that uh, there could be a couple different people riding with you. Who do you think is going to ride with you in the race? Uh, my uncle Joe is going to ride lap one, and my dad is going to hop in for lap two. That's kind of what I was hoping. So you could spend a little time with your uncle, and uh, then your dad's going to start bossing you around on lap two in the rocks, right? I'm going to flip the driver isolate switch. Yeah, that's that's a little switch where you can talk to him on the comms, but he can't talk to you. I, I like your strategy on that one. He's sitting right here just kind of shaking his head, but... Uh, I, I'm pretty excited, and I'm definitely going to be watching for you. Do you got any, anybody, sponsors, anybody else you got to thank uh, for helping you get down here? Uh, well, there's Maxis, Rugged, SMT, my parents, everyone that's here camping with us, everybody that we let that let us borrow their rigs to go rock crawling yesterday. It's... What about Paul Jr.? Oh, yeah, I want to thank Paul, too. He, he helps out a lot. That's awesome. Well, uh, before I let you go, I do want you to kind of walk around your car and you tell us what's in this car, and, and I'll kind of quiz you. So uh, we talked about earlier up there, this is a car built by your brother and Joe, or your uncle Joe Thompson and um, his brother Brendan Thompson. And so tell us about this, and Colton, we can't forget Colton. Yeah. Um, so tell us about the setup. I want to know um, suspension, chassis, axles, transfer case. Just really quickly go over some of the setup you can show us on the car. Uh, well, my uncle had some weird designs with the suspension. 
uh, when it first came out, the leading arms are completely different than anybody else has ever done. And this is what we talked about, too. These are basically trailing arms in the front. Yeah. And then it's got a 10-inch front diff. Uh, and then what's weird about this front diff, it's, just, it's in the center. How does that work? Uh, it's in the center because it's got a rear engine car. So the diff has to be offset in the rear and the front diff is centered. So what, besides the front diff being centered and the engine in the rear, tell us about that differential. What do you have to do to that differential to make the car go forward? That diff is a low pinion that's flipped upside down. Man, I'm telling you what, you've done your homework on this thing. I'm liking it. So it's hard to wrap your head around that. That's a low pinion diff and when you flip it upside down, the car won't go backwards. When you put it in drive, it goes forward now. Yep. All right, so let's uh, walk around, show us in the cockpit here. Uh, in here, we tried to make it as minimal as possible. Uh, the dash is somewhat low. It's just big enough for our gauges so we can see everything out the, out the windshield. And I'm looking at here, I mean, the seat height is only about, what, that's 10 inches below the dash, huh? Yeah, uh, we sit really high in this car so we can see a lot out of the front. When you're sitting in the car and it's at ride height, you can see both the tops of both front tires. So that's always important in a rock crawler to see where your tires are going. And not a lot of cars have this kind of visibility. Um, and then the nice thing is without the engine and the heads and stuff being in the front, you got a lot of foot room, right? Yeah. And we can narrow the nose down with the engine being in the rear. So it's a little smaller in the front. So we can see both front tires. And that's... That's about it here. So what about this? Same thing, rear radiator. Most cars have rear radiator, right? Yeah. Um, and then this is where your engine sits, huh? Yeah, that's uh, that's my Dart Block 454 engine with LS3 heads, LS3 intake. It's got a 12-quart oil pan on it with a CBM, front cover, dual, uh, dual roller timing, timing chain, uh, truck accessories. And they're actually pretty short headers for uh, these cars. And then, do you know approximately the horsepower this thing might have? I do not. We have not put any, we have not put it on the dyno yet at all. But it is 454 cubic inches, huh? Yeah. Do you know what they say? Uh, no. They say there's no replacement for displacement. <laughs> right? Yeah. All right. And then, uh, what do you got going here? Because this is kind of cool in this setup. Yeah, those are my air filters. So they're they're actually Bobcat air filters in there. Uh, they get really dusty. The K and N's were just letting too much air in in there. Too much. Too much dirt in there. Too yeah. Much dirt. Too much okay. dirt in there. And then, so let's walk around back here to this side. So, being that it's rear engine, um, here's your rear differential, right? What what differential do you have in the rear? Uh, it's a tube works aluminum billet. It's a billet tube works diff. I'm not exactly sure what size. And it, well, I think I kind. I think I kind of know. So it's. I think it's 40 spine. It's yeah. offset here. Um, but this one is also flipped, correct? Yes, this one was also a low pinion that's flipped. All right, and then uh, one of the things that we talked about up there that we kind of went into is where would these shocks come from? My rear shocks came off of a can am. <laughs> and then your dad got on the lathe and shortened them down and kind of made them work because, as everybody knows, there is a uh, shortage of shocks on the market right now. So, n not only are they expensive, but he just couldn't find any. So, he made it work, right? Yeah. Uh, we were we were trying to find some from King, Fox, anyone that really had any. We couldn't find anything from anyone. So you got a trailing arm here in the rear because this used to be a 4400 car, um, but only a single shock because that's the class you run, right? Yep. Uh, I can only run 37 inch tires, single shock per corner, uh, non-sticky compound tires. Yeah, and then this is an internal bypass shock, correct? Yeah, it is an internal bypass. So one other thing that we can't really see but you can tell me about is Right underneath the passenger seat here is the transfer case, right? Yeah. And tell me what transfer case you got in here. I think it's an Atlas transfer case out of a Chevy. Well, it isn't an Atlas, yeah. but it's a it's a Ford 205 transfer case, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's a Ford 205 transfer case, and 
it is uh, divorced and very affordable, and your dad's been running it for a long time. Um, you remember what transmission you got in here? I got a 4L80 transmission. So one of the, my favorite parts about this uh, rig is the 4L80 um, transmission, and uh, this thing is a manual valve body 4L80 transmission, right? So you don't just stick it and drive. So are you pretty used to shifting it through the gears? I am. I was hitting fourth gear and qualifying. So, do you do you, do you know? Who, well, tell us about your transmission sponsor, the guy who builds the transmissions for you. Uh, Jim at ATO. He he he's got these things dialed in, and once you once you figure out what gear oil is best for them, then it's uh, then it works great. We haven't had any issues with the transmissions. Uh, we take them back to him and have him service them, and he's and he maybe puts new clutches in if it needs it. Yeah, and, and I, I think that that 4L80 is a very important part of this rig because a lot of times you're running this thing in low range. So you did the qualifier in low range, correct? I did do it in low range. And did you do the whole qualifier or did you shift it to high when you got up into the flat? I did the whole qualifying course in low range. And so what people don't understand is having that manual valve body 4L80 with the overdrive, you can get ripping on that thing and uh, not run out of motor, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. When I hit fourth, and I was coming down the hill after, after Chocolate Thunder, and coming to Horsepower Hill, and it, it still had more in the motor. Well, so a lot of people are shifting from four low to four high in that qualifier because you got the rocks first. So having this transmission combo with this transfer case combo, because the 205 is basically like 1.9 in low range, is really the key to this car. And uh, I think you drove it great, and I can't wait to see this car out there on the lake bed. You know, rear engine, solid axle, flip diffs, 205 transfer case, manual valve body 4L80. Um, just a really cool car, lots of visibility. Um, gonna be one of the coolest cars to watch in the rock so uh the car has it and i think you got what it takes to drive it so uh i wish you luck we'll see you at the finish line thank you all right austin it's 4800 day and you guys are not out there on the course are you no we're not and what happened uh push rod broke when we were out there testing the car and it and this was like right at the end because you already went and got it tuned right yeah yeah. So when was that failure, last night? Uh, that failure was a couple days ago and we just found it last night at around 10, 10 p.m. Oh, so there was nothing wrong with the engine. It was The miss was because of the push rod. Yeah. Yeah. Sucks, dude. I wanted to see you guys out there today. Yeah, I wanted to be out there today. I'm a little bummed about it. Well, but... now let's hope that your dad does something spectacular. Yeah, I'm trying to kick him out of the car for lap one. I like that idea. All right, so we're here in contingency, and today's 4800 day. We just talked to Austin, and you guys are not out on the course. Nope. Unfortunately, Austin was able to break the push rod. Uh, you broke the push rod? <laughs> I guess so. I guess I broke it. So we thrashed with Jake and uh, Josh and Matt at Proper Tuning to try to get it fixed uh, all day yesterday, but just wasn't in the cards. Ended up finding a p broken push rod in the motor, so instead of trying to just destroy the brand new motor, we're gonna just let it be and he gets to have a full hammers experience. So the whole show, thrash, get down here, get excited, anxiety, and then no race. Yep. And now another year of waiting and waiting and thinking. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I look forward. What about you? Are you? Uh, I heard that you're gonna let Austin drive the car in the race, the 4400. It was a very slight. I was like, I should just let him give him the keys, let him take it out. But then I was like, what kind of parent would I be with that? You'd be no a way. great dad. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're just selfish. You're selfish. Well, percent I'll take it. Hey, wait. You did. It, all honestly though, you did lay it down in qualifying. Yeah, qualifying. Went Extreme. What awesome. number did you qualify? Uh, ended up qualifying ninth overall. So that's uh, pretty good, right? Yeah. I mean, fifth, four, off, fifth off the line. Five so. rows back. Yeah. yeah. I'm gonna be stoked on it. Seeing going out there a little dust, but a lot of fast guys. Well, we're gonna be watching all day. Yeah. All right.